Hey, hey, 61023 today. Um, I'm not exactly sure where to start with this one. <laughs> so I got a new GoPro, the GoPro Hero 11 Black. And during the video tests, I made quite a few mistakes. I had inconclusive tests because of one thing, and I had inconclusive results because of others, and it was just, I had, it was a nightmare. It was a mess. It really was. So I'm really not sure where I should even start with this one. So I guess let me just start at the beginning. So my first GoPro was the Hero 4 Session. 1080p, a little small, discreet thing. It was awesome. I hated using the app with it. It would lock up the camera sometimes. But then I discovered about stabilizers. So I picked up the Feotech G6, and I fell in love with stabilized video. I really did. And it's actually one of my most watched videos on my YouTube channel. But the Feotech G6 was actually designed to go with the GoPro Hero 6 Black. The 6 Black had that beautiful 4K video that I just fell in love with. So then I progressed up to the Max 360, which I also fell in love with that camera. I mean, 360 time lapses, come on. That's just... I was just screaming my name. <laughs> One of the other things I really loved about the Max 360 was the hyper smooth stabilization. So I didn't even need a gimbal with that. It worked so great. But I found out later why. <laughs> and we'll get to that in the video. So I had 1080p stabilized, I had 4K stabilized, and now I'm jumping into 5.3K with the Hero 11 Black. And I was hoping the hyper smooth stabilization was going to cut it. And I got mixed results. <laughs> I really did. So I picked up a few things for the 11 Black. Picked up an aftermarket battery door for it. It has another door for plugging in the USB-C. Because the way they place it on the GoPro Hero 11, it's kind of in the wrong place. Even GoPro makes an extra battery door for it, so it's not a big deal. I purchased the Go High from Amazon because is there really another way to go? Come on. It doesn't really click onto the hinge. It just sort of fits around it. The latch isn't spring loaded. It just opens and you got to push it shut. Cold shoe, it might have some use if you got a shotgun mic with one of those thumb wheels to tighten it down. Quarter 20 hole is good for me. I could use that. Maybe put the GoPro lights on there or something. That would work. Another thing I picked up, now that I have the 11 black, the Hero 4 Session, I think, is going to be getting retired. And the Hero 6 Black is going to become my new underwater camera slash critter cam. So I figured I'd pick up, you know, another selfie stick for it. I picked up this guy. Kind of neat. I forget the name of it. But it's like a big telescoping selfie stick. But somewhere along the line, I got this brilliant idea, you know. I could use this selfie stick in my regular hiking rig. I can like put the thing right on the ground and I can extend it up. It'll be at the proper height to shoot me while I'm talking. So I figured, oh, well, that would work pretty good, you know. And just bring it back down maybe when I'm hiking around. And But, <laughs> like I said, mistakes. Yeah, I made quite a few mistakes while I was doing these tests. It was kind of getting frustrating after a while. It was going on for like weeks and <laughs> I was dragging it out. Just doing it, you know, when I could get the chance to anyways. But the final mistake that I made, the results blew my mind. I mean, it really did. It was mind-boggling. I sat there for an hour awestruck, just going back and forth between videos. You'll see what I mean later on. I didn't test every function of the camera, every frame rate, every bit rate, every this and that. I tested the 5.3K and the 4K at the 120, well the 4K 120, and then the 5.3K at 60, 30, and 24. Because that's really all that I'm gonna be using it for. You know, I'm not interested in the 1080, I'm really not interested, I believe there's like a 2.7K in it. The last GoPro is 4K, this one's the upgrade, I'm using the 5.3K, that's why I bought it. I used the 10-bit, I used the high bit rate for all the tests, for picture styles, I did try out the flat, the standard, and the vibrant settings. The flat really isn't all that flat. It just has a little less contrast, which I think removes a little bit of saturation, which I guess you can call flatter. I don't know if you'd call it flat, but it's definitely flatter. The standard, honestly, I wasn't really crazy about. The vibrant looked a little bit better than the standard, I thought, but it was... 
it's hard to explain. I think it was just more contrast levels than anything, but still the vibrant compared to the flat. Uh, the flat just looked the best out of the three, I thought. That was pretty much one that I'm going to be sticking with. As far as lenses go, 16 millimeter, which I believe is the super view, and the 14 millimeter, which is the hyper view, they call it. Honestly, they all look fucking great. I, <laughs> I mean, I had no real complaints about any of the the actual footage that was coming off of it. My only problem was the stabilization, because my test consisted of me just like walking around in my yard here, my driveway, just kind of walking really hard, you know, trying to simulate walking on a trail, bouncing around, see how much stabilization I'd be getting off the thing. So I tried tests without HyperSmooth on, I tried with HyperSmooth, I tried it with Boost, and then I tried the new function, HyperBoost, SuperBoost, excuse me, one of those, I can't remember. I was getting these little, I'd call them micro jitters in the focus. At times of heavy stabilization, the focus would just like completely fall to hell for a few frames and I was just like, what the hell is this? And I was just not happy with the results. And I'm thinking, oh, great. The Hero 11 is a whole lot bigger than the Hero 6. So I thought, this thing isn't going to fit on the Feotech G6, no way. I mean, that's not going to work, you know. It's, it's too big. It's not going to be able to mount it on there properly with the same bracket. Unless you made some kind of, like, custom bracket or something to maybe put it on there. Well, why the hell not, right? So the way I made the bracket, I couldn't use the same screws that you use to mount it regularly because they were too short, obviously. But what I did find is they were the same size as guitar pickup height adjustment screws. <laughs> and those fit perfectly and they were just long enough to make this work. From there I found a little thin piece of metal, actually a thin metal back from another guitar pickup. <laughs> ground it down, drilled a couple holes in it, started to mount it, and I discovered that to actually pull this off, you need to take the backing plate, remove it, and flip it over. Because the inside of the plate has a lip going around it, and that lip makes it very difficult to mount that camera in there. It wants to either slip one side or slip in the other, you know what I'm saying? You take the back plate off, which is only two screws, which you need a 1.5 millimeter hex driver. Then it's just two screws, take them out, flip the plate over, put the screws back in. So you will need a bench grinder and a drill press to pull this off. Was it worth doing? Hmm, let's see. Hey, hey, 52123 today. Came back out here just to check it out. I haven't been up here in a couple of years, so. But I kind of remember why, because there's like nothing going on back here. <laughs> Got this big, beautiful pond here, getting all blocked off by beavers, beaver hut out there. All kinds of dead trees everywhere, just like I like it. And not a damn thing going on. <laughs> My usual path out here was like totally overgrown and all flooded out. We just, it rained pretty good. Because I've been going through there for years, and it was never flooded like that. I'm going to head down, because the other spot out here that I haven't been to in years, I'd like to go check out too, the Log Frog Pond. Here's where I should have crossed. <laughs> I went through so much nasty shit to get over here. <laughs> and all I gotta do is cross this little stream right here.
So I'm up here at the Blog Frog Pond now. And we got some serious fucking clouds rolling in. Them clouds ain't happy. So how you like this new camera angle, huh? It's almost like you're right out here with me now. <laughs> it's my other new toy I bought. Telescoping selfie stick kind of a thing, but it's like a... It's a big fucker. I forget how big it is, but it's big. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm going to be out here much longer. This might be it for today. But I'll be going out again this week. Finish this vlog. Play with the new guy. Hero 11 Black. Ooh, I like it so far, but we'll get to that. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> I love the way the panning shots looked. They look great. The static shots of me just talking to the camera. Mm, magnificent in that 5.3K. I loved it. That hiking footage, ooh, no, 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 no. Something's seriously wrong with that stabilization. It reminded me of vlog number one, hand holding the ADD back in the day. <laughs> it was just that awful. I can't subject you guys to that, no, uh-uh. Not doing a hiking vlog, no, that's just not gonna work. So I started thinking about, well, what could be causing this? First thing that popped into my head was the G6 is actually made for the 6 black, not the 11 black. There is a big difference in size. Well, not a big difference, but there is a definitely a difference in size and weight between the two cameras. And I noticed that when you put the 11 black on the G6, you also can't properly balance it. It's always front heavy, so it's always pointing downwards. What I was doing was holding it in a place and then hitting the button on the G6 till the motor is engaged. Another thing I was thinking is maybe the motors aren't strong enough to be able to properly stabilize that 11 black, being it's a little bit heavier of a camera. So I started researching gimbals for the 11 black, and this is when I started discovering where my mistakes came in my test and found my results to be inconclusive. Now with the 6 black, I always used ND filters because I always shot with a 180 degree shutter. With the Max 360, I always ran it in auto because there's no way you can put ND filters on that. It's 180 degree lenses on both sides of the camera, you know, it's, they just don't make anything that's a proper ND filter for it. But the reason being, and credit goes out to Air Photography on YouTube for pointing this out to me first, I've, I've heard other people say it as well, HyperSmooth works best with faster shutter speeds. If you're letting the camera run in auto and you have HyperSmooth on, the camera is going to say, okay, I got to keep that shutter speed up nice and high so that I can properly use HyperSmooth. The other thing that makes the HyperSmooth freak out is the 180 degree shutter in the ND filters. I never realized that before. It causes all those little micro jitters and it just causes the system to just kind of freak out. It seemed like a new gimbal was the way to go. So I started looking at gimbals and I noticed there was really two on the market. I guess a lot of people aren't using 3-axis gimbals for GoPros anymore due to HyperSmooth. From what I found was the Hohem iSteady Pro 4 and the other one being a, from a company called Inky. I watched a few reviews on both and I decided to go with the iSteady Pro 4. I looked it up on Amazon, it's usually $99. Just happened to catch it on a lightning deal that day. I mean, this is like, you know, an afternoon of like looking into this. Plus there was like a $9 off coupon. I ended up picking the thing up for 75 bucks. So I'm like, okay, well, I mean, it must be fate here that this is gonna work. <laughs> so it showed up on the weekend, pretty much right before I was getting ready to go out hiking. So it was like, okay, this is perfect. Figured I'd do maybe another quick test video, just another one, quick one around the driveway. So I shot the video and honestly the results were not good. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? I have a stabilizer that's actually made for the 11 black. What is the factor that is making this thing freak out like this? And then it dawned on me, the only other thing that it could be. The extendable selfie stick. Yep, it must be causing vibrations or something while I'm hiking, moving around. It's the only thing I could think of. So I took it out of the equation, retested it out in the driveway, and I was like, okay, these results are almost acceptable here. I'm, I'm liking this a whole lot better. Got all my gear together, went out, did another test vlog for you.
so that was the Pro 4 with the 11 black, no hyper smooth. While it did a good job stabilizing, I wouldn't call it completely stable. I saw a lot of janky movement in there, especially in the hike and down the trail footage, and uh, I still wasn't happy. Honestly, the only conclusion I came to was that I need to do more testing. <laughs> so I spent about a week just trying to figure out, okay, I gotta retest all this, but I already have all this test footage. What do I need? Uh, what don't I need? The weather, I mean, it was just, basically it went on for about a week of trying to figure out what the hell do I need here? So while I was doing that, I figured let's really compare the Pro 4 and the G6. Let's do a little checklist, see who gets more points. Pro 4 is made for the 11 black. The G6 is made for the 6 black. So right there, there's one point, but it's made of plastic. It is it is a solid plastic. I'd say the weakest point is this quick release. I mean, that's... The release itself seems solid, but these little hinges on it, and this thing is like kind of spring-loaded down here. It's, I, yeah, and that's that seems like the weakest point on it right there, really. The G6, that's all metal construction. Camera's mounted on with screws. Problem is you're putting a bigger camera on the G6, and how long is the motor is gonna last doing that? Are they rated for that weight? Um, plus you got that little piece of metal on there and the bigger screws and, and you can't properly balance them right to begin with. The Pro 4 is a 14 hour battery, supposedly rated. And the G6 is like dying on me <laughs> real quick. <laughs> it's an older battery, but it's a replaceable battery as well. So I can go out and buy another battery for the G6 if need be. Whereas the Pro 4 is a sealed unit, but it can be used as a power bank. So I gave a point for the 14 hour battery and a point for the power bank for the Pro 4. I really like the quick release on the Pro 4. It's quick. <laughs> hey, go figure. Mounting it on the G6, yeah, it takes a few minutes, and unmounting it, of course, well, not a few minutes, maybe a good minute or two once you get to know how to do it, but it takes some finagling. It's not a pretty setup. Doesn't have to be pretty if it's functional. Pro 4 doesn't have a screen on it. It's just got a series of lights that really tell you what you're doing, what mode you're in. Screen on the G6. I can't even see it anymore. <laughs> you have to be in the dark to even get a glimpse of any kind of light coming off. And even then, it just looks like it's just a bunch of icons with that are lit up in there that you can't read what they even are. <laughs> I mean, maybe a new battery would fix that. I don't really use it much anyways, though. I only use modes 1 and 2 for the most part. So a few of the things that were the same on both of them, modes 1 and 2 are the exact same. Mode one is torch mode, so if you're holding it out straight, you know, works like a flashlight. Vertically, you know, it's still pointing out in front of you. Same thing on both of them. I like that. Mode two is, I forget what they call it, you're holding it like this and you point it downwards, the camera will actually point downwards. If you're holding it like this and you point it back, the camera will start pointing upwards. That one I use quite a bit as well, but it doesn't seem as... I don't know how to explain it, but responsive, I guess, on the Pro 4 as it is on the G6. I think when you point it downwards on the Pro 4, it seems to not want to go all the way down. It sort of just goes, like, almost all the way down, whereas on the G6, it's going, like, you know, pretty much straight down, you know? And I think I'm just used to it coming out like that. But as far as that, they both work good. The Pro 4 doesn't seem like it's as stable as the G6. Despite the fact that it's newer technology, you would think that it's, you know, updated technology, but it seems like it's a step backwards from the G6, honestly. But for the price, yeah, I mean, it's it was half the price new, so... I mean, it's got some nice features. I wasn't happy with the stabilization. I'm not unhappy with it. I just wasn't as happy as I was with the G6. Well, it really, that came down to about five points for the Pro 4 and three points for the G6. 
<laughs> so it wasn't looking good for the G6, but I still love the G6. It's still a beast. I mean, I'm not going to throw the thing away, that's for sure. But we weren't done with the retest yet. And that's where the results actually blew my mind. I was not expecting what the results I got. But my results were only due to a mistake. I only needed four videos. The first video being just handheld, no stabilization. Second video being handheld with hypersmooth. The third being on the G6. The fourth being on the Pro 4. Well, only after I shot the fourth video, I realized I left hypersmooth on from video two. So I'm like, shit. Well, now I gotta go shoot the last two videos over again to complete my tests. Because I had hypersmooth on and that's gonna be a variable and that's gonna throw things off. So I was like, well, I'll just delete them. And I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I'll just see how they came out. So I shot a fifth video with the Pro 4 and I shot a sixth video with the G6. Hyper smooth off. Watch the videos and if you didn't see it already, <laughs> the G6 with the hyper smooth is like floating on a fucking cloud. It's that smooth. I was in shock. I sat there and I went back and forth between the videos for like an hour just watching these little clips over and over for an hour. Just like, I can't not believe how smooth that is. It's like, it looks like it's you're on a damn tripod. It really does. It's just insane. Just floating on a cloud, you know? <laughs> so there's no doubt that the G6 with the 11 black, using the hyper smooth, just hyper smooth on, no boost, no hyper boost, whatever, super boost, whatever they call it. It's, it's magical. It's really magical. Holy cow. <laughs> it's stable footage. I mean, I, I really, I haven't been out and testing it in the woods yet. G6, 11 black, hyper smooth. I can't say what the longevity of the motors are gonna do, you know, propping up that big fat ass camera, but uh, we'll find out. Still have the Pro 4 if it does shit out on me. The hyper smooth on with the Pro 4, yeah, it, it, that looked really good too. 
it was just a little bit less stable than the G6. Sum up my final findings here, my test results. G6 with the 11 black, hyper smooth on. That's the way to go. There's no question, that's the way to go. 5.3K, 60 frames a second. I've been shooting in 24 for as long as I've been shooting the vlog. I actually think I'm going to go start doing the 60 frames a second. Maybe put it into a 24p timeline, you know. I actually kind of like the results there. It still gives it that sort of cinematic film look, but don't get all the blurry frames. I liked it. It looked good. 16 millimeter super view with the flat profile. The 14 millimeter hyper view, that's, it's good for an effect. It's not something you're really going to want to use all the time now. <laughs> it has a tendency to distort things. It really does. So it's more of an effect kind of a thing. The 14 mil hyper view. 16 millimeter super view. That's my favorite focal length anyway. So the flat color, GoPro color sucks. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> the vibrant looks a little bit better than the standard, but compared to the flat, it still looks just overdone like they just cranked up all the saturation sliders and <laughs> it's just overcooked it really is flat which really isn't all that flat to begin with it's just less contrast it's still the best of the gopro picture styles in my opinion the jitters that i was getting and you might get them too it comes down to when heavy stabilization is needed but it also comes down to things like nd filters 180 degree shutters in any low light situations where you're using hyper smooth you're going to get those little micro jitters and that's just not cool so you really need that good stabilization so i think that's how why the g6 and the hyper smooth is such a badass combination so i really like the 11 black i mean i loved all my gopros i absolutely do they're they're great cameras they're durable as hell my Canons, my GoPros, I drag them through freaking forests and swamps and all kinds of nasty shit. They've always performed exceedingly well. Like I said, they're durable little cameras, you know. I love GoPros. And the video quality is great too. So that's it. And that's the results of my findings for the 11 Black video tests. Hope you found some use out of them. Maybe you'll be shooting the same way I do. Maybe you will shoot completely different with it. Let me know in the comments. Love to hear it. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. Tell me I suck. Give me a thumbs up, though. Anyways, I'll catch you in the next vlog. Later.